Welcome to this fourth episode in the Seven Heaven Catholic Talk series titled How People Open Themselves to Satanic Attack. For me, opening scripture for this episode is found in Matthew chapter 12 verses 43 to 45 where Jesus rebukes some teachers of the law and Pharisees by telling them when an evil spirit goes out of a person it travels over dry country looking for a place to rest if it can't find one it says to itself I will go back to my home so it goes back and finds the house empty clean and all fixed up then it goes out and brings along seven other spirits even worse than itself and they come and live there so when it is all over that person is in worse shape than at the beginning this is what will happen to the evil people of this day so in today's episode we look at the seven ways in which we can innocently or knowingly open ourselves to Satan and satanic attacks. The first one is through temptation. The second one is through people. The third one way is through places. The fourth way is through practices. The fifth through impediments. The sixth through curses and the seventh through volition. This knowledge will empower us to be on continuous guard against defiling ourselves, the temples of the Holy Spirit. So stay tuned as I elaborate on each of those seven ways. Temptation. The very first way in which we can open ourselves up to Satan and satanic attacks is by yielding to temptation. Temptation is, sol solic sorry. temptation is solicitation to sin, whether by persuasion or offering some pleasure. However, in paragraph 2847 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, we are told that we must discern between being tempted and consenting to temptation. Because the sin lies not in being tempted, but in consenting to or yielding to temptation. We will all be tempted at various points throughout our lives. Even Jesus was tempted, as we read in Luke chapter 4 verses 1 to 14, during his 40-day fast in the wilderness. But he did not yield to the temptation of the devil. However, persistent sin, that is, continuously yielding to sin, leads to grave hardening in sin. As Father Amoth, uh, that's Father Gabriel Amoth, the former chief exorcist in the Diocese of Rome explains, we can become completely possessed by demons if we persist in giving in to temptation and particularly serious sin. And as practical examples, he further states that the many individuals who abandon themselves to sexual perversions, violence and drugs fall into this group. People. According to paragraph 1606 in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, we read that every man experiences evil around him or within himself. Therefore, the second way in which we can open ourselves up to Satan and satanic attacks is through proximity to evil people. Between the United States con Conference of Catholic Bishops and Father Gabriel Amoth, we have a list of such evil persons which reads as follows. 
healers, mediums, psychics, card readers, palm readers, witch doctors, magicians, etc. We also have the backing of several Old Testament and New Testament verses that these are indeed evil persons. As part of the moral and religious laws given to the Israelites by God through Moses at Mount Sinai, in Exodus chapter 22 verses 18, the Israelites were told to put to death any woman who practices magic. In Leviticus 19 verse 31, God said, Do not go for advice to people who consult the spirits of the dead. If you do, you will be ritually unclean. I am the Lord your God. In Leviticus 20 verse 27, God said, Any man or woman who commits, any man or woman who consults the spirits of the dead shall be stoned to death. Any of you that do this are responsible for your own death. In Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 10 to 12 we read, don't sacrifice your children in the fires on your altars and don't let your people practice divination or look for omens or use spells or charms and don't let them consult the spirits of the dead. The Lord your God hates people who do these disgusting things and that is why he is driving those nations out of the land as you advance. In 1 Samuel chapter 28 we read that King Saul consulted a woman in Endor who was a medium when he did not get an answer from God concerning what to do about the Philistine army that had gathered to fight the Israelites. He pays for it in 1 Chronicles chapter 10 verse 13 since we read that Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord. He disobeyed the Lord's commands. He tried to find guidance by consulting the spirits of the dead instead of consulting the Lord. So the Lord killed him and gave control of the kingdom of David. Sorry, and gave control of the kingdom to David, son of Jesse. In Acts chapter 13, verse 4 to 12, we read about Bar Jesus, the Jewish magician who tried to turn the governor of Cyprus away from the Christian faith and whom Saul cursed and blinded. Places According to paragraph 310 in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, we read, With physical good, there exists also physical evil as long as creation has not reached perfection. Therefore, the third way in which we can open ourselves up to Satan and satanic attacks is through proximity to evil places. Once again, between the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops and Father Moth, we have a list of such evil places which reads as follows. The operating spaces of healers, mediums, psychics, card readers, witch doctors, magicians, etc. Satanic sex, spiritual sessions, black masses, etc. Pornographic shows, violent horror movies, stadiums, parks, and discotheques that play satanic rock. Furthermore, according to Father Amoth, proximity to evil places and persons has greatly contributed to the increase in evil ailments in the last decades, especially among the young. Practices The fourth way in which we can open ourselves up to Satan and satanic attacks is through involvement in evil practices. Yet again, between the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops and Father Moth, we have a list of such evil practices which reads as follows. Cleansings, New Age Religion, Reiki, Wicca, 
tarot card reading, nature worship, practicing the occult, magic, witchcraft, Freemasonry, participating in satanic worship rites and rituals, abortion. As relates specifically to abortion, Father Amort indicates that the heinous crime of abortion aggravates this situation. Its terrible repercussions are clearly seen during exorcisms because to liberate a victim who is guilty of abortion usually requires a very long period of time. Impediments the fifth way in which we can open ourselves up to Satan and satanic attacks is through impediments to grace. According to the Catechism of the, Cate of the Catholic Church, in paragraph 203, we read that grace is first and foremost the gift of the Spirit who justifies and sanctifies us. But grace also includes the gifts that the Spirit grants us to associate us with his work, to enable us to collaborate in the salvation of others and in the growth of the body of Christ, the Church. In paragraph 1996, we read that grace is favor, the free and undeserved help that God gives us to respond to his call to become children of God adoptive sons, partakers of the divine nature and of eternal life. Several things or circumstances in our lives can serve as obstacles to us receiving grace, being in a state of grace, and remaining in a state of grace. These obstacles or impediments include irregular marriages, that is, Marriages not valid according to church law, work problems, financial difficulties, grave injustices or sins, unforgiveness, ungodly lifestyle, that is, a lifestyle that does not follow the laws of God. Six curses. The sixth way in which we can open ourselves up to Satan and satanic attacks is through subjection to a curse. Lexico defines a curse as a solemn utterance intended to invoke a supernatural power to inflict harm or punishment on someone or something. In this case, Father Amot states, the victim of a curse is innocent but there is culpability on the part of whoever casts and or commissions the curse. This can be achieved in many ways. Malefice or spell, binding, evil eye, malediction, and so on. Volition. The seventh and final way in which we can open ourselves up to Satan and satanic attacks is through volition. Lexico divines volition as the faculty or power of using one's will. In other words, when we knowingly and deliberately with full faculty or naively form ties with demons and Satan. According to Father Moth, consecration to Satan a pact of blood with him and the participation in satanic rites or attending satanic schools to become priests of Satan are all direct and willful ties. He continues, yet again, bonds can be forged in a subtler, almost unconscious manner. For instance, out of thoughtlessness or curiosity, we may participate in a satanic meeting, play the game of the glass or the coin. We imitate magicians by following the instructions of one of the many manuals readily available, or we watch how to shows on certain television networks. 
I end this session with a story that Father Moth shared from his own experience as a Catholic exorcist, which illustrates quite clearly this seventh way. Giuseppe, 28 years old, came to me with his mother and sister. I realized immediately that he came to see me only to please his loved ones. He emanated a strong odor of smoke. He used and sold drugs and blasphemed. There was no point in talking about prayer and the sacraments. I tried to convince him to accept my exorcism, which by necessity was very brief because the demon revealed himself immediately and violently. I had to stop. When I told Giuseppe that he was possessed, he answered me. I knew that already and I am happy. I get along fine with the devil. I never saw him again. In closing, let's see what the Catechism of the Catholic Church has to say about all this. In paragraph 2116 we read, all forms of divination are to be rejected. Recourse to Satan or demons, conjuring up the dead or other practices falsely supposed to unveil the future. Consulting horoscopes, astrology, palm reading, interpretation of omens and lots, the phenomena of clairvoyance, and recourse to mediums all conceal a desire for power over time, history, and in the last analysis, other human beings, as well as a wish to conciliate hidden powers. They contradict the honor, respect, and loving fear that we owe to God alone. Finally, in paragraph 2117, we read, all practices of magic or sorcery by which one attempts to tame occult powers so as to place them at one's service and have a supernatural power over others, even if this were for the sake of restoring their health, are gravely contrary to the virtue of religion. Mm -hmm.